Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we are going to discuss the third element of user defined function that is function declaration. Function declaration is also called function prototype. Function prototype is nothing but it is a function header with a semicolon. We already know what is function header. This function header we should not specify semicolon. But this function declaration is nothing but the same function header along with the semicolon. Okay. So function prototype should be placed in global declaration section before main. For example, if you are considering, this is a program to add two numbers, already we know. So, this is nothing but the function declaration or otherwise function prototype. Okay. So, this is nothing but function header. The same thing, whatever we have used in function header along with the semicolon. That is nothing but the function prototype or function declaration. This function declaration is similar like a variable declaration. Normally, if you want to use any variables in program, that should be declared first. Then only we can able to use in programs. Similarly, if you want to use any user-defined functions, that should be declared first before used, like variables. And this function prototype should be placed in global declaration section. So, global declaration section is nothing but it is placed in between the header file section and the main function. This is nothing but the global declaration section. So, here we can declare the functions as well as the global variables. Whatever the variables we wanted to use inside main function as well as user defined function. That is called global variable. Anywhere we can able to use in that particular program. That kind of variables we can declare here. That is nothing but the global declaration section. And this section is placed in between the header file and the main function. And this function prototype, there is no code. Simply it is a one line statement along with semicolon. There are three parts in function declaration. One is return type, function name and formal parameter list. So this is return type. Here it is void. If the return data type is int in the sense, we can specify int or float or char here. Okay, according to the program. So this is return type. And next, we need to specify the function name. This is the function name. To name a function, we need to follow certain rules. And the rules are similar like naming and identifiers. That is, we have to use the valid symbols only. That is, uppercase letters A to Z, lowercase letters A to Z, digit 0 to 9 and underscore symbol. And here, the first letter should be letter or underscore symbol. And the maximum length is 31 characters. We should not use keywords as function names and the identifiers are case sensitive if you are using lowercase letters in the sense wherever you are referring that name we have to use lowercase letter only or if you are using uppercase letter means wherever we are using we have to refer with uppercase letters only similarly in function name also if you are giving the function name as lowercase letter in the sense we have to use lowercase letter in all three cases that is the function declaration function call and function definition in all these three places we have to use lowercase letters only or uppercase letters in the sense in all these three places we have to use uppercase only okay so similar like identifiers this function name also case sensitive and we should not use two consecutive underscore symbols and also special characters we should not use. So, these are all the rules to name and identifiers. All these rules are applicable to function name also. And this is nothing but the formal parameter list. Okay. And at the end, we need to specify the semicolon. This represents the function declaration. And return type not necessary to include, but recommender. If you are using, that is well and good. Okay, but not necessary. It is not compulsory to use. If we didn't specify the return data type, it won't raise the error. But it is recommended to use to give the clarity. And parameter list must always be included. If there are no parameters in this, simply we can able to specify the empty bracket. Okay, this is specifies the empty parameter list that represents void. And if you are considering this function declaration, the function name, data type, that is the return data type, parameter list, type of parameter and order of the parameters should match with function call and function header. 
for example if you are considering this is the function declaration and this is nothing but the function call and this is nothing but the function header and the complete thing is function definition okay this already we know so here the function name so function name is add and the type that is the return type here we have specified void and parameter list that is the variables we have used in that particular function type of the parameter that is the data type of the parameter and order of parameter so here we have specified a first then b okay so all these things should match with function call and function header so here if you are considering return data type is void in function header also return data type is void it is matching in function call it is not necessary to specify the return data type okay and the function name if you are considering in function declaration the function name is add and in function call also it should be add function header also it should be add only if you are changing even one letter also the function name will be different it won't match okay then it won't execute it will raise error only then parameter list here the parameter list is a and b and its type is int okay and in function call also parameter list is a and b suppose if here you have used a and b here if you have used b and a in the sense that will raise error meaning is the parameter order is changed you should not change the parameter order also so the parameter list it should match in all these three cases function declaration function call and function header and the type of the parameter so here parameter a is integer b is also integer here also a is integer and b is also integer here we have declared okay similarly in function header the type of the parameter is integer only for both a and b that also should match and the order of parameter also here a and b a is specified first b is specified second similarly only in function call also you should use in function header also you should use here we should not place int b comma a or b comma a we should not use so the function name type of the function parameter list type of the parameter and order of the parameter all it should match with function declaration function call and function header of function definition all it should match okay so this is function declaration and the general syntax if you are considering this is the data type and this is the function name and within bracket we can specify any number of parameters along with its data type so type 1 parameter 1 type 2 parameter 2 likewise any number of parameters we can able to include within this bracket at the end it should end with a semicolon this is must this represents the function declaration so function declaration is nothing but function header with semicolon okay everything should be same in all these three cases so this is nothing but the function declaration so now we have completed the elements of user defined function what is function definition what is function call and what is function declaration next we will discuss an example to implement function with the different examples okay thank you for watching this video 